Hello, investors. My name is Joe Torrey. I'm an investment counselor here with Real Wealth. And today we're going to talk about how to do due diligence on real estate investment locations. We all know that real estate is all about location, location, location. And everyone always tells you to do your due diligence before you buy a property, but no one really tells you how to do it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So a uh, quick agenda. First, a background on real wealth and who we are, because uh, some YouTubers may not know who real wealth is and what we do. We'll go over that quickly, and then we'll get into a case study, an actual example of how you would evaluate a location. And then I'm going to give you a homework assignment at the end so you can apply what you've learned and give you some resources to uh, learn more. So first, a quick background on Real Wealth. We're a real estate investment firm. We offer one to four unit investment properties to individual investors. So it's basically single family homes, duplexes, fourplexes, that sort of thing. Two individuals, mom and pop investors, not institutional investors on Wall Street or anything like that. We were founded in 2003, over 20 years ago in California. And we currently have over 70,000 members and growing every year. So what we do is we identify the best markets in the United States where there's job and population growth and diverse economies, where the landlord-tenant laws favor the landlord, no rent control, that sort of thing. Then we go out there and we build teams in those markets. <clears throat> we screen and vet home builders, turnkey providers, property managers, and see if we can put together a good team. And when we can, we invite them into the network and they can offer properties to our members. So basically we do a lot of quality control. And then on the other side, we educate our investors and direct them to the markets that best meet their needs when they're ready to invest. So uh, you can go to realwealth.com to get more information uh, if you're interested. All right, so let's say you're an investor and you're talking to someone and they recommend that you buy this property. This is a case study. Uh, in Forney, Texas. And how do you know if this is a good location? How do you know if this is a good place to invest? Uh, especially if you've never been to Forney, Texas or know where it is. It looks nice, but how do you, how do you tell them? So uh, you have a couple options. One is to fly out there and do a site visit, but that's very time consuming and very expensive. And what if it doesn't pan out and you spent all that money for nothing? The other way is to use online resources and that's what we're gonna focus on today. Because if you can do 90% of your research online, that could save you a lot of time and money. Uh, a lot of times you're looking at multiple locations. Maybe there's five properties in five states you're looking at. If you can do your online research and eliminate a bunch of them and maybe narrow it down to a short list of one or two, that would save you a lot of effort. Okay, so the first uh, site we're going to look at is niche.com. And you just go to niche.com. And then over here, where you click on places to live. And you type in the zip code of the property that you're looking at. In this case, it's 75126. So the first thing that comes up is just some general information about that location. First of all, you see a map. You see Forney, Texas is a suburb of Dallas, which is good. Dallas is booming. Uh, it's kind of far out, but it's, it's in the Dallas metro, population of 60,000. And here's a neighborhood grade. Overall niche grade is B+. Plus. So for new investors who may not be familiar with it, within the real estate investing community, we talk about neighborhoods as A, B, C, or D neighborhoods. D neighborhoods are war zones with graffiti and boarded up houses, drive-by shootings. You don't want to touch those. A, A neighborhoods are very good. They're where the doctors and the lawyers live, but they're typically too expensive and they don't cash flow. So that's not real where most investing takes place. The sweet spot for investing is a B neighborhood. And this is a B plus, so that's great. So it's a neighborhood where everyone, most people on the street own their own home. Uh, they're professionals. Uh, there's good schools and people want to live there. A C neighborhood is more of a tenant neighborhood, like apartment buildings and uh, fourplexes. And uh, a neighborhood that's predominantly tenant heavy won't appreciate as much uh, as a, a B neighborhood. And uh, some other metrics, you can see why it's a B plus. Most of the metrics here are positive. The schools are good, eight minus, nightlife, diversity, weather, health and fitness, outdoor activities, families, jobs, housing. The only negatives are the cost of living is high because it's an affluent area. So prices are high for homes. And the commute isn't great because you can commute to Mesquite, Texas or some areas out here in the suburbs. But if you had to commute to downtown Dallas, 
that could be a, a problem. It's a bit far. But most people are working from home, at least sometimes uh, nowadays, so that's less of an issue. So right away, when you look at this first page, you get a the lay of the land. What is this neighborhood like? What is the, the where is it located? And it gives you a good feel for the for the area. If you drill down further, you look at real estate. The median home value is two hundred fifty four thousand, which is above the national average, and median rent is also way above the national average. And here's a critical met metric you should look out for: what percent are owners versus renters? Uh, people who own their own homes have pride of ownership and they take care of their houses. They mow the lawns. They don't let junk accumulate on the, on the lawns and they take care of the houses. Whereas renters are less concerned about it. And so uh, rent, rental neighborhoods tend to uh, deteriorate faster. Those are the C neighborhoods we talked about earlier. So this is one thing you should hone in on. What percent are owners versus renters? I like at least 60% owners, preferably more. And then there's some detail here about uh, the, the bell-shaped curve of home values, you can see the majority of them are 200 to 400,000. And then what the rent breakdown is. So that gives you a sense of what the real estate market is like in this area. And then there's demographics. Uh, who lives here? So we can see the average household income is close to $94,000, which is way above the national average, maybe 50% more than the national average. Families with children, 48%, which is great. It makes for a very stable community. Education level, we see a bell-shaped curve, but most people have had some college or an associate's degree or more bachelor's and master's degrees. And then if you click this link down here, that's highlighted in red, more about this 75126 residence, it gives you more detail. So here we see uh, racial diversity. This zip code is 54% white, 21% percent African-American, 20% Hispanic, et cetera. And this is the second thing that you should really hone in on is how, how diverse is the, the neighborhood. But this zip code is very diverse. And when you have a vacancy in your property and you, you're looking for tenants, pretty much anybody who's affluent could fit in there very easily. So that's a good thing to look for is, is a diversity. Male-female breakdown is roughly 50-50, as you might expect. And the age uh, distribution is very good. Notice only 7% of people are 65 and older. Most people are in their prime earning years, except for the kids. So that's a good uh, indicator for that metric, for that uh, uh, zip code. And finally, schools. So you go to the schools tab and it divides it into public schools and private schools. So you can see it starts with the A-rated schools and then you can click on this link and look at all the schools in that area, in that zip code. And then similarly, if you click on the private school tab, you can see a list of all the private schools and how they're rated. So uh, this one website will give you lots of information about the area. So even if you've never been to Forney, Texas, you have a pretty good idea of what it's like and who lives there and what their income and education levels are and uh, how the schools are and just the general um, uh, lay of the land. One thing it doesn't have is uh, crime statistics. So let's go to another site. Here's another one called bestplaces.net. Same thing, you type in the zip code 75126 for Forney, Texas. And it has a lot of the statistics we saw on the previous site, but uh, it also has some information on crime. And crime is way below national average. You can see this orange line here. That's the crime rate and violent crime rate in Forney, Texas, which is well below the national average and well below the Texas average. And also it's trending down. So that's a good good indicator. When you're looking at neighborhoods, you, crime in general is not great, but uh, especially violent crime. If there's vandalism like graffiti or uh, petty theft, that's bad. But what really will hurt your returns is violent crime. If there's muggings or assaults, you know things like that, your tenants won't feel safe and they'll break the lease and leave. So when you're looking at demographics of an area, you wanna focus on what is the violent crime rate. Another site is citydata.com, city-data.com. Same thing, you go here in the middle of the screen and type in the zip code of the property. And it pulls up lots of information here. It has some crime that shows crime is in the green zone. It's good, uh, better than most places. And then it has a pie chart showing you how it's broken out. Most of the crime, 80% of it is thefts, very little assaults, burglaries, robberies, that sort of thing. So that's a good positive uh, indicator.
And then again, a racial breakdown, the numbers are similar, 51%, 20%, 20%, similar to what we saw on the other site. So a lot of these sites have overlapping information, but a lot of them have information that other sites don't have. So it's good to have a couple of them in your back pocket. You can look at different sites and get as much information as you can about this zip code. So what do we think about this uh, area, Forney, Texas? It's a good location. It's affluent. It's got a diverse ethnic mix. It's got good schools and it's got low crime. So two thumbs up. So without even having gone to Forney, Texas or knowing anything about it, you can do your research from your desktop and get a pretty good feel for the area and whether or not it's a place you want to invest. So here's a summary of resources. The three that we covered today are on the left, niche.com, bestplaces.net, and city-data.com. But there are others too. There's neighborhoodscout.com. There's greatschools.org, which focuses on schools. And there's spotcrime.com, which focuses on crime. Uh, I like these generic ones because they give you much more information than just one thing. But the ultimate source of information is also your property manager. Most property managers are born and raised in the cities where they manage. They know the neighborhoods backwards and forwards and block by block. In a lot of areas like Kansas City, for example, uh, even within one zip code, properties can vary wildly. You can be in one area like a B neighborhood in, in Kansas City and two blocks in one direction is a slum and two blocks in the other direction are million dollar mansions. So even within one zip code, there's variations. So these websites will give you information by zip code, but you really need to talk to your property manager as well to get a feel for what the area is like a block by block. So here's your homework assignment. Uh, pick some zip codes you're familiar with, maybe a zip, zip code where you grew up or where you live now or the zip code where you went to school. And then uh, go through this exercise with these various sites, try them out, poke around and see what you can learn and see how accurate they are compared to your firsthand knowledge of those areas. And I think you'll find that they're pretty accurate. And when you see that, then you'll get a comfort level with how accurate they are uh, and uh, know to trust them. So your goal here is to identify your trusted sources of information. You know that for crime, you like bestplaces.net or for uh, demographics, you like niche.com, that sort of thing. So when uh, you're looking at real estate investment opportunities, you can go to your trusted sources of information and find out what you need to find out. Okay, so if you want to learn more, you can get a free membership at realwealth.com. This is our homepage and there's our founders, Kathy and Rich Betke. You click on this join for free button and get a free membership. That'll uh, entitle you to see the new investor core curriculum if you're a beginner, three 15 minute videos that'll help you uh, understand what you need to do to invest in real estate. It also gives you access to 900 webinars on all sorts of real estate topics from 1031 exchanges to multifamilies to tax planning to uh, how to get financing, everything else. And we also have weekly educational webinars and podcasts every Thursday at noon Pacific. We have a new webinar with new information, either about a market or some aspect of investing, like getting loans. And if and when you're ready, you can speak to an investment counselor like myself. Uh, I'm one of three investment counselors at Real Wealth, and you can talk about your specific situation, your goals, and your risk tolerance, and then see if we can make a plan for how you should invest in real estate investing if you want. And all of this is free. So that's a quick rundown on how you do your due diligence to find out if the location you're looking at is a good one for investing. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.